Hello, everyone. Welcome to another learning beginning Python during office hour live stream. So, again, let me open up my uh, simple mouse locator. Um, we'll continue this arcade. Um, and we'll see in the intro. Like I said, even in the intro, some of the questions are really, I would say, not trivial, but certainly not too difficult. But they're all doable. But I would say it's not as obvious like at the first glance. I've been coding for many years, but uh, I guess I'm not uh, properly trained for many elementary technique. This is Reign of Reason. So we're at a chessboard cell color. All right, let's try this. Okay, let's read the problem. It says, given two cells on the standard chessboard, determine whether they have the same color or not. For cell A1 and cell C3, the output should be true. For cell A1 and H3, uh, the output should be false. All right. So cell length is a uh, two and uh, um, it's a string. And uh, um, so cell one and cell two, they're strings. And essentially, what happens is uh, we just check if uh, uh, if that difference, I mean, converted to a numeric value, an integer, uh, can be um, divided by two without the remainder, with remainder zero, basically. So let me open up a new file. Let me name this uh, um, OH8. And as usual, let's import NumPy first. It's like my go-to package. The first problem, the first problem, let me copy, first copy down the, uh, the problem. So by popular request, um, okay. So for example, uh, we have this. Um, oh, interrupting system call. Why? Um, let me close up the bit files. All right. Somehow, um, this code is complaining. All right, so now we're good. Let me see if I can switch to the window. Okay, good. So for example, cell a, cell one is uh, A1 and cell um, two is C3. Basically, let, let, let me first try this old cell one, zero, 65. And old cell two, zero, it's 67. So if we check, for example, if we check print
cell uh print all the cell one zero uh subtract cell uh sorry all the cell two zero All I want to print is if this, I think I can get rid of one parentheses or can't because I wanted it to be whether it can be um, divided by two. Sorry, the remainder. If the remainder can be uh, divided by two, I want to return not. Okay. So we return true. And uh, um, what's happening is let me let me check if, uh, um, for example, if we have a minus number, it could possibly be happen. Uh, minus seven, two, it's one or minus 10, remainder two, it's zero. Okay, so it's not too bad. And then for the second, we do the same. If it can be divided by two without remainder, so it's good. And we, I'm already ready to write down the return. So we return not, let's do that not. And let's copy down what's here. So we return not the order of cell divided by two and um, not and we copy this, but we change this to uh, one. Essentially we're saying, okay, so if the difference, if the coordinate difference of these two um, can be divided by two without the remainder, they should be of the same color. Basically, this is what we did in this, this round test. Oh no. <laughs> okay. A1 and B2. Ah. Okay, of course. Okay, okay. Um, so, sorry, my bad. I was wrong. If, um, so the case one, case one is, uh, um, all right, A, B, C, D, F, G, H. Okay, the case one is It's much uh, it's it's much complicated than I thought. So the case one is a, for example, a, a b and a order a. I believe order. What's capital a? What's the difference between capital a and little a? Is there any difference? Okay, so uh, it has some difference, um, but it's capital. So 65, 65, 67. 60, um, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it is a 65 to uh, 73 or 72. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's right. Um, Okay. So case one is they are of like even difference number of rows. Okay, so I should change. Uh, for example, if A1 and B2. Um, if we do this, we're gonna get false because they are um, 
within like a, a difference. Okay, so now I have a new idea. Basically, what we want to do is we scrap this. We only keep, um, for example, we only keep this. Okay. Now, what happens is if this can be uh, this divide uh, integer, not. I have less bracket. If it can all be divided by two um, without remainder, what it means we further check if uh, if there's difference. All right. So we check if the difference, uh, second difference. All right can be divided by two. If it cannot either, if it cannot either, we return, we return true, All right? If it's else, we don't have to put else because uh, in the end, we can just do um, else, Um, so else now what, what we do is if uh, so if there are an even difference for example here and here then the the numbers have to be of even difference as well because if it's odd difference it's uh so which means if uh, I should check uh, uh, not, all right, and then we return true. And otherwise, uh, otherwise, so we jump out of if we return false. Let's try again. Syntax error, line three. Oh, my bad. Forgot to copy paste there. All right, let's check if it's good. It's good. Now let me explain. Um, essentially, we are checking like two scenario. So we 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 divide the same color into two cases. The first case is if the row or column difference is, uh, is, is an odd number, then the, the other difference, for example, if, if the row is different by a, an odd number, then your column must be different by an odd number. And the same thing applies to a uh, difference for the uh, even difference okay oh <laughs> i see yeah this 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 is the same okay um okay i i see algorithmically it's the same code with me but this is more elegantly written so in the end it's a sum of uh, of all of the e uh, of your row and column coordinate have to be able to um, divide by two because you cannot have um, like I said earlier it must be even and, and even or odd and odd you can be even odd and odd even which means uh, the sum must be an odd number okay yeah this this I mean I I, I would have a give it a more mathematical thought but uh, but this yeah this is a simpler way to the key is we use odd. We uh we convert uh, something to numeric value. Okay, let me uh, magnify my uh my screen a bit. So we've done the uh rain the reason. I I don't think the five problems here are too bad, but uh um. I think it's easier than the island of knowledge. Let's check uh, through the fog. 
The first problem is called a circle of numbers. Consider integer number from zero to n minus one written down along the circle in such a way that the distance between two neighboring numbers are equal. Uh, okay. Given n and first number. Okay. Find the number which is written in the radially opposite position to the first number. So two opposite is seven. I mean, there, there must be, there must be, so this is a simple like group question. Um, it's essentially it's essentially saying mathematically this form a cyclical group and we want to find the inverse of the add operation i think my algebra is long gone so i'm i may be babbling but um first of all i do believe the number total number of uh, of, of numbers must be um must be an even otherwise you won't have an opposite yep right here okay guaranteed constraint n is greater than four okay guaranteed constraint first number is okay then that that's easier um what we should do is we just do um for example two is opposite is seven um we have zero to nine right so n is 10, we got 0 to 9. So for example, if we have 9 numbers, I'm sorry, 9, it should be um, 0. So the opposite. The opposite is basically I think I, I have an idea. Uh, what we do is we can uh, we can form pairs. For example, when we generate a list of n numbers. We, fit, we just form pairs with 0 to 5, uh, 1 to 6, 2 to 7, uh, 3 to 8, and 4 to 9, and zero, 5 to 0. Okay. How, how do we do that is we, uh, we simply There are many ways to do it, but a st stupid way would be just uh, uh, we write a for loop and we check if it's greater than if it's greater than uh, half of it, then we subtract um, the total number divided by two. Uh, for example, it's a zero. We should plus if it's uh, if it's nine, we should be minus. So it would be something like the simplest one would be, uh, so we just check. So for example, n equals 10 and first number is two. And we just check if uh, first number is less than or equal to 10 divided by two. What we do is uh, we output um, two plus n divided by two, my bad. And uh, um, else, we just do output equals. Um, I should use first number. First number subtract. 
and the bar match. So for example, the output should be uh, seven. Yep. Um, maybe I should do I and T, but uh, um, so uh, maybe I should do this. Then now the output should be an integer. That's right. Um, so we don't have to worry about the format. I think it's 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 this simple, but uh, uh, there should be a should be an easier way to do it. So, for example, um, let's see if uh, it's good. No, oh, test four is wrong. For example, the input uh, n is six. The first number is three. Output is six. Oh, expected output is zero. I see. It should be uh, so. It should be uh, strictly less than. I see. So um, first, copy down the description. Okay. I think then this should be good. I think there must be an easier way to solve this. Um, let's try to see. First number plus that. Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah, this is a uh, okay. This is this is simpler, but uh, yeah. Deposit profit. You have deposited a specific amount of money into your bank account. Each year, your balance increases at the same growth rate. Uh, with the assumption that you don't make it additional deposit you find how long it takes your balance to pass a specific threshold i mean this is an exponential rate problem deposit rate threshold would be uh equal three um throughout the year um yeah so can i I mean, can I use a lock? I think this is a lock problem. Right? But uh, I think the idea is to use uh, elementary numbers. Okay. Elementary way would be this, for example, n equals um, zero. Right while um, our deposit deposit times one plus rate is less than a uh, threshold. Um, what we do is we uh, we just times our deposit by a uh, one plus rate and uh, uh, n just plus one. Okay. So, and then we last return. I think that's it. Let's check. Oh, output is zero. Um, okay. While this deposit is uh of course ah uh, please pardon my uh mistakes it should be one plus rate okay huh it's wrong again okay let me let me check so while deposit times one plus rate rate is 20 oh of course
I should do this. Undefined. Oh, really? Expected. So M plus one. Okay. Deposit. Okay, maybe maybe I should do this. So while deposit is less than threshold, deposit equal that. And then we uh, plus that. Right? Rate is that. I should just do a hundred. Run test. Okay, there we go. Somehow, why the integer division is is not correct? Let, let me try. So one. Oh, of course, if it's integer division, you get zero. <laughs> this is zero. Yeah, my bad. So we get an infinite loop. Yeah, we should use log. Let me check some of the top solutions. It's as simple as log, I think. There we go. <laughs> Um, okay, it uses math. Oh, so the math is imported. I see. I want to use NumPy, but, uh, um, but I, then I can use math. I got it. Absolute value sum minimization. Oh, okay. Given a sorted array of integer a, your task is to determine which element of a is closest to all other values of a. In other words, find the element x in a, which minimizes the following sum. We want to find the medium. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, essentially medium. Do, do we have a medium in math? Let's import math. I don't think math has any statistics. Let's try what uh, is a math. Does it have medians? I don't think so. No, it doesn't. It that doesn't have any statistic. This, but NumPy does have median. Uh, for example, if we do two, three, do we get two or three? It's getting 2.5. What? This is apparently not right. Okay, how about this? Now it's 4.0. So what I should do is let me try, um, let me try this. Uh, let me try array, sorted array. A is NumPy array, uh, two, three, but we specific D types. D type is INT, okay? So now we put A median. It's still 2.5, why? NumPy median is compute the median along of, um, okay, so override input is true and A is not already, default is false, they will save, okay. Um, override input optional if true, then it allows memory for calculations. Input it. modified. This will say memory where you do not need to preserve the content. Keep them percentile. Give a vector. The median of V is the middle value of the sorted V. When when V is when V is odd. When n is odd, the average of the two value of v sorted when 
<laughs> it actually gives a average. Okay. Yeah, essentially, I think if A is sorted, we just return the middle one. Is it? Um, so a sorted array of integers. So we, we should just do A, len A. Um, if Oh, um, I can already see where this is problematic. It's because if A is sorted, um, so we check if the length, all right. Let, let, let's do import numpy <laughs> um, as mp. Um, if len a um, is even, is odd. So here, if if length of a is odd, we just return uh, numpy medium. Uh, we just return numpy medium of, of a. If if it's even, if the length of a is even, um, we compute a temporary value um, so that we return. We we still return. Um, And we compute we compute two values, all right. Um, for example, um, so a one equals a. Uh, it should be len a minus one divided by two. Mm -hmm. So right right now, uh, the first one is length of a is is. Uh, is odd then we just pick the median uh-huh if it's even if it's even there are two uh we we should do we should do is uh um we should divide by two uh -huh. then subtract one and a2 equals a len a divided by two okay we, we just compare we compare these two elements so if um, let's do a medium, let's do a m equal that. If that, we just return the medium. Um, so now if we just check the following, um, say, if the first number is closer, if the first number is closer to this AM, we return the first number. That's right. So um, if the difference between AM and A1 is less than or equal to uh, A2 subtract AM, all we do is we just return the first first number. Else we return a two. Let's check. Something went wrong. In list indices must be integer, not float. Okay. Yeah, my bad. I should do uh, integer division, even though it's an odd number. Okay. Um, right now it's passing ten tests. But let me explain my code. So I found that NumPy medium will return. Actually, if we have a, a even number of elements, it will return the median two elements average. So this works for odd, uh, 
number if if a has an odd number of elements but a if if a has even number of elements uh, what we do is we simply uh, check um, the medium check the difference with the medium because essentially what we're here is we want to return the medium so we check the um, we check the difference between the uh, number before the medium and the number after the medium if the smaller number has smaller difference to the medium than the bigger number to the medium then we should return the smaller number okay let's check let's run test oh we already ran it let's submit all right test fast um let, let's check the best answer um pi 3 really you directly return that i don't think this is this is good because it's definitely possible that for example we want to minimize the difference okay i don't think this is good um For example, we have two, four, seven, eight. It's that simple. Should we return four or seven? All right. So if uh, um, let's compute the difference. This is two. This is three. This is four. So two, four, three. Totally is nine. This is three, five. Oh, it's it's actually equal. I see. Okay. Yeah, of course. Because the difference between this is four and seven, the difference between four and seven is the same thing as seven and four. So we just return that. Yeah, I overcomplicated the problem, but uh, we get the same answer. Okay. This problem is called string rearrangement. Let's try it. Um, given an array of equal length strings, you'd like to know if it's possible to rearrange the order of elements in such a way that each consecutive pair of strings differ by exactly one character. Return true if this is possible and false if not. Wow, this already reads like a difficult problem. Let's copy down the... Um, description you only, you are only rearranging the order of the strings not the order of letters within the strings wow this makes it even more difficult for example uh it's a b a b b b and b a b string rearrangement input array is false There are six possible arrangements of these strings. None of these satisfy the condition of consecutive string differ by uh, one uh, character. Um, okay. Um, we, we, how do we get all the permutation of the strings? So first we, we obtain all the permutations. How do we get the permutations? Uh, all permutations of a list, I thought. 
Mm. Oh, from iteration tools. <laughs> All right. I don't want to do that. Let's see if uh, NumPy. Well, this is like cheating using iteration tools. Okay. Okay. Yeah, using iteration tools looks like uh, cheating. Um, let me first try if I can do this. Uh, for example, can I do... Can I do that? Now, if I do BB... Okay. Um, now let's try the string. The problem tells us if we sort a, a, a three string, what do we get? Okay, A, B, A, B, A, B, and B, B, B. All right. So if they are only different by, uh, one letter. If there exist, if there exist some arrangement of the strings so that consecutive one only differs by one letter, it must be the sorted way. Am I right? I do believe my claim is is correct. Okay, Ord cannot get at that. Uh, the, the, is there a string compare? Um, Count capitalize uh, is space is there a compare um, swap case translate up as the fill contains is there a string compare uh, replace petition make trans lower join is upper is numeric is format find count encode center case fold. We do have plus, for example, if we do this, we get that, but we don't have minus either. So I, I, I can do minus, that's right. Um, string and string. What we should do is we, uh, do we have replace? Replace. Yeah, replace isn't what I want. I just want to compare these two strings. If it's in the sorted order. String compare Python. Um, let's add stack overflow. Is there a simple built-in function set? Oh, I just want to compare like a different by one letter, right? So for example, if I do, okay, now I'm thinking about a way is if we have two strings, if we have two strings, for example, uh, I can first form a set. Okay, so S1 equals, for example, um, 
okay for my set is uh, uh, element e for e in a string for example uh, a a b um, let's try the s1 is a b uh-huh okay how about list I should do list perhaps um, Now, if uh, uh, S1, S1 is AAB and uh, S2 is, for example, BBB. Okay. So at most one difference. If there is a, if there is more difference, then uh, it returns false. Characters. None of these satisfy the condition of consecutive string by one character. Exactly one character. Exactly one character. So it has to be one. Okay, now I have an idea. First, we uh, we sort the string. All right. Then second, for um, i in range len um, input array uh, minus one. What we do is we want to compare. We want to compare. So for example. Um, what we do is, uh, this is an array of, uh, um, so for example, let's do indicator. Okay. Uh, indicator is empty list. All right. Um, So if indicator, okay, it's only by, it's only different by one element. Mm -hmm. The difference, if we sort it, um, what's the string length? It's, it's not too bad. Indicator is that. Uh, what we want to do is um, we check S1 is uh, uh, input array. Uh, I, S2 is input array, I plus one. Okay. What happens is we want to compare if they only different by uh, one element. If we have an empty list, what do we have? Count, clear, append, insert, pop, remove, reverse, sort. What was pop? I forgot. One, two, pop. One, two. So uh, one, two, four, uh, zero, one. Um, so pop two, we get four. Um, how about uh, pop zero two? Can I do that? Uh, most two argument. So for example, I can do this. List object cannot be interpreted as integer. Okay, I see. So this top pop essentially is an index. What we want to actually do is we want to compare. Um, so list one is um, 
um, s for s in s1 and list two is s for s in s2 string number two and we want to compare if they are only they are different exactly by one so for example Mm. Yeah, this is true. And uh, uh, what we do is what we do is, uh, um, and we sort that. Okay. Um, and when once we we sort these two what we can do is we just compare element by element so it is for example this should be uh are they of the same length lower cases input array guaranteed let me try to see these tests q oh they are of the same length okay so we're good and what what we do is we uh we just uh let's do indicator and inside this loop it should be uh it should be um it should be um i so it should be s list uh one i equal equal list uh, two i for i in range len len list one okay then we should assume list one and list two are the, of the same length otherwise this code will give me uh wrong and now we just do sum a list all right i forgot if we can sum list we do yeah okay this indicator is one now if uh, indicator is greater than one or less than one we just return false okay um so for example right now what we do is we append indicator append ID. okay and we need to return like uh, uh, like all of them equals true. So for example, I should do uh, this is true, right? But uh, if I do this, this will be false. I should return a list such that um, i if i is equal to one uh for i in indicator okay i haven't debugged this so let's try if it's good whoops oh it's it's still passed for input array okay so q and q we return a true but uh, it's false it should be exactly one right so uh indicator is length is two so for i in range one uh we have this s1 is uh uh for example zero uh and this is one okay and that okay so indicator is uh uh for i in that okay um okay so they have to be the same so i should say this is not i should say n equal n equal is only one my bad wrong test okay true output is true really okay now let to me we have to do more debugging so locally 
Um, an input array. Let's do input array is this list. Let's try to see our indicator. Our indicator is one and one, really. What our in input array becomes. It become that, yes. If we sort, if we sort that, it's gonna be A, A, B, right? This is gonna be A, B, B, oh. Maybe I can't do sort here reordered exactly one character um you only rearrange your order of the strings not the order of letter within the strings that's right maybe i can't do this yeah that's right Nine eleven. Wow. Okay. Test eight. My output is false, but uh, uh, expected output is true. Okay. Interesting. All right. Let's check our indicator. It's zero one zero one. Okay, the first two letters. Um, let's break here. So list one is A B C. List two, how about list two? Is A B C. Why? Oh, 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 I see. I can't do sorted. It's because. Okay. We have a repetitive entry here. Oh my God. Okay. I, I can't do this sort. I think I have to use eater tools. Okay. Permutations. Yeah. Um, let's do all permutations of a list Python. Let's use eater tools. Yep. We just do list. Okay. Um, let's copy this. Okay. We import eater tools. Um, what we do is we do all array equals list eater tools permutation. Um, permutations, okay. Of the input of the input array, all the permutations, all right. And what we do is we for uh, array in all array, we check them one by one. Okay. So for example, the indicator. Okay. Uh, So if there is one true, we just return true, right? Mm -hmm. So all indicator, we should do all indicator. 
you call that um all indicator append of this and we change this to arr 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 all right and all append of that and lastly we return if one of them is true then we're good yeah so we just return some Oh wait, can I do that? No, I should do bool maybe. Yeah, sum or ind. Let's check it. Okay, <laughs> so we do each of tools. We uh, we return our routine for all possible permutation of a string, so that we avoided. Then in this way, we could avoid this case, which we have uh, repeated. Uh, in this way, we have uh, uh, avoided the case where there exists some repeated strings. Let's sum it. Oh no, execution time limit exceeded on test 18. Okay, there are only four seconds. So we have only four. First of all, I guarantee this, this is correct. Okay, uh, next is I should do, so um, I should add maybe here. So if, so if, So if this is true, we just return that. Yeah. If this is true, we just, uh, um, for example, we just return that. Mm -hmm. Right. So so that we don't have to check all strings. Otherwise, we return false. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so that we don't have to check all arrays. In this case, I, I guess I guess uh, um, this problem, the trick part is we don't want we don't want to check all arrays in this list. We have to just return whenever we we have found some combination sorry permutation of let's see pi. String rearrangement, okay. So diff eta tools permutation, okay. I guess the top solution we have to do that if some diff O star X, okay. So for X, oh, for X itself, iteration to, okay. Wow, this, this is a cool solution though. Um, but let's back. So through the fork, dig deeper. Same way in diving deeper. Exact each case. Okay, it looks it looks uh, harder than through the fork. So that's it for today, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.